What's up people? This is Sully Breaks and firstly I just want to say welcome to By the Fireside. Before I go further I just want to kind of explain a bit about the concept of By the Fireside and what it's about. By the Fireside is basically what it originally is, is a show I used to watch as a kid. Lots of children used to gather around the fire and then Mami Dokono, all you got is that would mean Mrs. Kenke, I'm not sure how to translate that would tell them a story in a Nazi story. Storytelling, if, I'm not sure if it originated, but it's one of the foundations of our culture and I feel like that art has been lost. So where By the Fireside comes in is where basically I just come every week and tell you guys a story, I guess. The stories, some of them I would have written myself, some of them would be from different sources, maybe in a Nazi story here, maybe there, and Nancy the Spider for those of you who are familiar with him. But I always credit the author, so you know whether it's one of mine or it's someone else's. I just hope you enjoy and listen. Since it's the first week, I think I'll get into it and I'll start with the storytelling. This is the first story which I've written myself and I hope you enjoy. This is called... One day, an old hunter was out on his daily hunt when he came across a poorly wolf. The hunter, knowing to be suspicious of such antics, thought he'd just proceed on his journey and ignore the wolf in case, you know, the wolf might attack him. He's pretty suspicious. But as he cautiously tried to tiptoe past the wolf, he heard the wolf. Please, old hunter, please help me. I'm very sick. I was separated from my pack when we was attacked by a monster and if you leave me here with the winter coming I'll surely die. Now the hunter, all his instincts told him to leave the wolf. But him being a naturally kind hearted man could not leave a poor animal there to die. So taking up his hunting gear, put it down, slung the wolf over his shoulder and carried him to his house. Over the next few days, the hunter spent his time nursing the wolf back to health. Eventually, weeks became days and days became months. During this time period, the wolf and the hunter developed a friendship. It came to the point where they'd go together on their hunts, so the hunter and the wolf would go out together, hunt, catch, come back and eat. So one evening, they were out on their hunt. When they were attacked by a vicious monster, now the hunter and the wolf were cornered in and the only way to free them being going past the monster. So the hunter called the wolf, he said, listen, wolf, you're faster than me. If I distract the monster, you can run and call the townspeople and alert them there's a monster and hopefully save me. Now the wolf, understanding this reason, was about to take off, but then he paused and he said, actually hunter, you know what, you go. Because when I go to the village, they may see me as a wolf and they may get scared and run away. Then there'd be no one to come and help you. Now this made a lot more sense to the hunter. But before he could even reason, the wolf darted off into the corner, taking the monster with him. The monster followed the wolf. The hunter made a break. He ran to the townspeople, ran as fast as he could, got there. He said, townspeople, townspeople, rallied them all up. There's a monster. We need to go back and get it. So all the townspeople, they came, they fought, they rushed back. They got there, they were faced with a monster. After a long battle, almost an hour, they finally managed to slay it. Now, with the dead monster there, the hunter's priority was to now find his friend the wolf. So he began searching, searching. He searched and searched and searched until the sun almost came up. And as he was about to give up his search, he came across something in the dirt. He rusted it, moved the dirt. And much to his dismay, there was his friend, the wolf, his body mangled, dead. The hunter spent the rest of his time grieving the wolf on his way home. That night, the wolf appeared to the hunter in a dream. The hunter's first reaction was to ask him, You knew, you knew, you knew that if I went, that the monster would kill you. The dream wolf just nodded his head. That's when the hunter in his dream burst out in tears and he says, So why would you go? So why would you sacrifice yourself to save an old man like me? The wolf responded, When I was sick and dying, you, you took your time, you took the chance and helped me. And with that knowledge, 
I was happy to sacrifice myself for you. The man looked at the spirit of the wolf and understood. Now, the moral of that story, I guess, I'm not trying to preach you anyone if you're older listening to it. I'm not trying to preach you, but I guess kind of the moral of that story is, it's kind of self-evident, you know. Sometimes you never know who you show kindness to and how it may impact you in the future. Like Jesse Jackson says, he has a phrase which he says that, where he says, never look down on someone unless you're helping them up. And I think most, a lot of people, I, I believe a lot of people can apply that to their lives in certain situations and predicaments. Because I feel like as a society, we all got to help each other, innit? I'm getting into the preaching boundary. But let me just leave you another phrase by Mark Twain, where he says, Kindness is the language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. So I hope that kind of exemplifies what I was trying to say in the story. That's by the fireside, and I should see you guys again for another story next week.